Batch Neural has become one of the most prominent layers in deep learning and it's currently being used in almost all architectures out there. What it does, according to the authors, is to reduce the so-called internal covariance shift of the training problem. But why is this such a big deal? Well, that's the question I would like to answer in this video. So what do we mean by the internal covariance shift and why do we want to reduce it? Well, let's imagine that we have the following neural network and we are one of the deeper layers. From our perspective, all we know about the model is that we can get an input, we multiply it with some weights, add a bias and produce the output. We have no idea that this output was produced by a previous layer and unfortunately, this lack of knowledge has one major side effect. To put this into perspective, let's imagine that after some time, this layer has learned that it can separate its input using this function. However, the distribution of this data is not static and can shift around quite often, depending on what the previous layers have found to be relevant in the data, even though the underlying function that separates the input remains the same. This phenomenon is known as the internal covariance shift and it affects especially the deeper layers of the neural network because they have to adapt each time to the new input produced by the previous layers, slowing down and destabilizing the learning process. Bechnor solved this issue by firstly normalizing the layer's input using the mean and the variance of the current batch and then rescaling the result to a desired scale using two learnable parameters, gamma and beta, which are used to increase the expressivity of the model. What we achieve by applying this simple trick is that we make sure that the mean and variance of the input remains the same, and thus our layer doesn't have to relearn the same function over and over again because there is no internal covariance shift in the input. Another factor that made batch nor so successful is linked to the need to normalize the input features. If you are new to this topic, I highly recommend you to firstly watch my video about why we scale the input features before moving on with this video, because I don't want to repeat everything that I've already said there, and I promise you that if you do that, the following explanation will make much more sense. So, coming back, the short explanation of why we want to scale our data is that we want to speed up the optimization process because if we don't do that, then we have to reduce our learning rate to ensure that our model converges, which in turn increases the training time. And remember, all except the first layer, consider its inputs as if they were the data features, not the output of another layer. So the scaling batch nor brings also speeds up the training process due to the same reason we have just stated, namely that we don't have high scale differences in our input and we can use a higher learning rate without any penalties. Finally, batch norm also induces a small regularization effect due to the noise we get when we try to estimate the mean and variance using the information available within a certain batch that may come in handy for neural networks which are well known to have a high variance. And those are basically three of the most well-known arguments of why batch normalization works so well when training deep neural networks. I hope you found this video useful and that you have learned something new today. Please leave a like if you did, let me know what you think about it in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy the type of content I create. See you next time, bye bye!